We still don't have an update from Football Manager, but with the English League 1 and League 2 seasons kicking off last weekend, the Championship kicking off this weekend, and the Premier League next weekend, it's time to scratch that itch. It's time to play Football Manager in Excel. Welcome to FM26 XL version. Let's talk new features. Since my FM25 version. Now I haven't had a huge amount of time to change the underlying game, but I have added a couple of things that should make your experience better. I have rebalanced the attributes that define game results. That means there are different skill sets across attack, midfield and defenders. What we had last year was super players that were best in position across attack, midfield and defense. This year, the distribution is much more balanced so that defenders don't always make great attackers and vice versa. The second new feature is really just a fix of a few hangover bugs, but so that the game will work better overall, particularly those that drove difficulties for different Excel languages other than that of English. And what we're left with is the complete English professional league and cup structure that can be played from the 2025-26 season all the way into the future. We have nearly 5,000 starting players to choose from across the English leagues and other top European leagues, with around 500 new gens generated each season. The player database should be correct from signings made to up and before the 2nd of August 2025. Note if teams have had more than 30 senior players, the players with the lowest current ability have been pushed away as available free transfers. The simulation mode is back so that you can quickly fly through seasons to see who will win in the future across all leagues and cup competitions. Now remember this is an Excel based game, it will only work in modern Excels that support VBA macros. Now let's talk gameplay. You start on this blank new game tab and you have a very difficult decision to make. What team do you want to manage? Remember that the team called testing is the scenario future world. So if you're more interested to see what alternative futures can be created, select testing. Otherwise choose a team across the English professional pyramid. I'm gonna choose Wigan Athletic. Remember to note the information at the bottom. If you choose a Premier League team, the first few weeks progression are considered pre-season. And this is because your league season is shorter than the other divisions. This really just gives you more time to train and develop your players and figure out that formation that really matters to you. As we start a new game, we jump into the team hub tab. This is your home base for all the information that you could possibly desire. It lets you know where we are in the season, what our next match is, and at what our most recent match was. Once we select our tactic, this will also be highlighted the tactics that I've selected, the players that we've selected, as well as the league table. At the top of the screen, you'll notice some select buttons. These can be used to easily jump from tab to tab, such as the league table tab, where I can see the top four English leagues. And another example, I can quickly go and see the cup fixtures and results, so I can see who's drawn who in the first round of both the FA Cup and the League Cup. The most important button is the progress next button. Now this will drive you through what is needed each game week as you progress through the season and future seasons. From the team hub, this takes us to the selection and tactics screen where I can see all my players and all their attributes. I have defined these attributes myself as a smaller cohort of the wider list that Football Manager has. Now I'm gonna choose my formation, I'm gonna select and then select my starting 11. To start with, I'm gonna use a 4-3-3 and be guided by the best information using the box on the right hand side to select my team. Now that I'm happy with my squad, I'll click the progress next button and be taken straight into training. Again here I can see my squad status, their weakest skills and decide what skill I want them to train for the next week. Development is based on your squad selection and age with a cap to potential ability. That's right, there's a hidden attribute much like the real FM. Players that are selected to start get the most development, players on the bench get the second most and players just in the squad have the least development. So select your game time carefully if you have some wonder kids you really want to hold on to. Now that I've chosen my training, let's progress into a match, shall we? The first screen shows us the Premier League and Championship results, and the second screen shows the League 1 and League 2 results. Now that completes the first match week, and I'm taken straight back into the team hub where I can see how we're going to be performing in the same season so far. If you like what I'm doing with this channel, please do leave a like and comment below. It makes a world of difference to a bit time YouTubers and Excel enthusiasts such as myself. Now let's talk about how to use the team search hub. Hopefully this is relatively straightforward, but hopefully it's an easy way to see how your team stacks up from a key attribute perspective and also across the summary stats to other teams. As I mentioned in my match features video, the player search tab is where all the transfers can occur. However, this is in the form of a player swap, where the player's value sold has to equal or exceed the player value bought. Looking at the Wigan squad, the weakest area seems to be attack. 
So we want to find a player that can help with this. For those not used to Excel, I find the easiest way to do this is to put limitations on my filter. The first one I do is on value, the second is on shooting, and the third is to arrange by speed. In order to get the best bang for buck, I'm also going to get the player with the best current ability, ignoring goalkeeping, that is fast and decent at shooting. Hence, I'm buying Fasayo here to bolster my attack. Don't forget that after you make a transfer, it is important to put them into your squad selection and update your training schedules for them. And as you can see, my attacking squad instantly increases by adding this new player. You need to unhide the match outcomes tab. Now it is very important to not adjust this tab as it will damage the integrity of this game. This is where all results are determined for all league and cup matches for all teams. The match engine is a random normal distribution of 29 different match outcomes that tries to balance out the likelihood of results between two even teams ending in either narrow wins and losses or draws. It also allows for the small chance of underdog teams to win and to win big. There are two factors that influence this outcome. One, home advantage provides a skew, and the secondly is team strength. And this is the team strength that we talked about before in the form of attack, midfield, and defense from your tactic selection. The best way to show this is with a live example of the Portsmouth Blackburn game. The top charts here show the raw distribution before skew was applied, with most matches going to end either in a draw, a small one goal difference match, or a two goal difference. The bottom chart shows how the advantage Portsmouth has pushes the likelihood of these results towards them winning. If this is too hard to understand, I'll try to put it simply. There's always a chance of small teams winning, no matter the opposition. Playing at home gives you an advantage. Maximizing your percentages in attack, midfield, and defense gives you the best chance of an outcome. Also, consistently high finishes maximizes your reputation to also give you the best chance of results. This is where consistently gives you a reward. Now let's talk simulation. Who wins the Premier League and the Cup in the next three seasons? As I said before, to simulate the season through, select the team testing and then click the next button. This may take a couple of minutes, but it will simulate a full season of league and cup match results. Now running my own simulations, in season one, the winner was Liverpool, Arsenal just a few points behind in second, and Manchester City collecting third. Now, I don't think there's any surprises in the top three there based on recent results. Bournemouth beat Liverpool in the League Cup final, with Blackburn beating Chelsea in the FA Cup final. In season two, Aston Villa won the league. Wow, that is a surprise. Second, again, is Arsenal forever. Seems to be just one step behind, and in third place is Liverpool. Brentford beat West Ham in the League Cup final, and Fulham beat Liverpool in the FA Cup final. In the third season simulated, that's right, the 2027-28 season, Arsenal finally win the Premier League, Newcastle came in second, Manchester City again finishing in third place. Nottingham beat Everton in the League Cup final, with Chelsea beating Sunderland in the FA Cup final. And that's some pretty interesting results here, particularly in the Cups. Now let's talk code. All of the code in this game, all the macros and the VBA logic, as well as all the tabs are unlocked and available for you to all see and change as you wish. I want this to be a community game, so play and change as your heart desires. In terms of download link, the link to free download and play this game is in the description below. When you first open the Excel, what I recommend doing is then saving another version of this game onto your system, enable macros, and then reopen this resaved version. What this does is effectively ensure all settings within your Excel will work. Now let's talk bugs. I'm a one-man team, so I'm sure some bugs may appear as you play through. Let me know about these in the comments below, and I'll do my best to fix them. Thanks for watching, happy gaming, and I'll see you next time. If you're interested in another video to watch, why not check out the video of how I made Pokemon in Excel within 24 hours.